Yes. So, all atoms have neutrons, uh, protons, and electrons. What you got to know for physiology is that uh, charge is very, very important. Okay, let me turn on my my uh, timer because uh, I want to keep these under 15 minutes. Timer, timer. Okay, so uh, because I got to put the blackboard's no longer allowing videos, so I got to put it on YouTube. That's what's going to happen. So. Know the basic structure of atoms. Uh, read through this. Um, read through that. Okay, so carbon atom has six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. Neon has 10, 10, 10. Uh, so atoms are electrically neutral. They have 10. Neon has 10 electrons and 10 protons, so it's electrically neutral. So everything's made out of atoms. We're all composed of atoms. It's incredible that we work. Okay. We'll talk a little bit about chemical bonds and how it makes up amino acids and proteins and fats and lipids and stuff. So as I said before, make sure you uh, read through all of this text. I would read through it before the... Uh, lecture and I'll make sure I tell you what's happening in lecture. I have to get better at that. Okay, ions. Ions have charge. They lose an electron or gain an electron. Cations lose electrons. Anions gain electrons. They attract one another and they form ionic bonds. So if you look at this picture, you see a sodium atom gives one electron to chlorine. That becomes chloride. Sodium stays as sodium positive, so you have salt. That's a that's an ionic bond between a positive sodium ion and a negative chloride ion. Okay. Okay, doke. So this is a chloride crystal, and it. Uh, has a, a regular arrangement of sodium ions and chloride ions. Ionic compounds always have a positive ion like sodium and a negative ion like chloride. Know, all, know what all of these abbreviations mean. These are the major, uh, somebody coming in here or whatever. Oh, okay. So these are the major Ions recognize these names, and maybe somebody is coming in. Yep, admit. Okay, so make sure you know the names and the symbols. Uh, covalent bonds share electrons. So, for instance, hydrogen shares two electrons. Oxygen shares has double bonds. When you see these two double bonds here, uh, so if you look at oxygen, it has a, like an equal sign in carbon dioxide. Uh, covalent bonds share electrons. Some, when the equal sharing of electrons, that's called a nonpolar covalent bond. When it's non-equal sharing, that's a polar covalent bond. Okay, so if you look at water, you notice the attraction between the slightly negative oxygen and the slightly positive hydrogen. So those dashed lines represent a hydrogen bond. Okay, so we'll talk a lot about hydrogen bonding. There are weak, weak bonds that are responsible for a lot of characteristics of water. Okay. So make sure you read through these text. Just read through them. There won't be much 
information on those. Okay, so when a reaction takes place, if we have, say, starch, and you eat some starch, uh, you could put it in, you could put starch in your mouth for years and it wouldn't break down into sugars. But if you add an enzyme, the enzyme will lower the activation energy and break down the starch into sugars. So enzymes are proteins that reduce the activation energy. So you can see at number two, that's where the, without the enzyme on the left, number two with the enzyme on the right. Enzymes reduce activation energy. So as soon as you eat a potato, a baked potato, the digestion starts in your oral cavity with amylase and enzyme breaking down that breaking down that starch. Uh, don't worry about that. You already know that. Make sure you know this. Know the structure and names of these compounds. Water. So water is an excellent solvent. Uh, it has a high heat capacity. That's very important. And uh, it's essential in chemical reactants. And it's a very important, very important chemical in the body. We know we're mostly water. Okay, so water is made up of oxygen, one oxygen and two hydrogens. The hydrogen is slightly positive. The oxygen is slightly negative. So the electrons are shared unequally. So that's why water has polar covalent bonds. You can see that the water molecules can dissolve salt and the negative parts of the water surround the sodium, the positive parts of the water surround the chloride. So that's uh, those sodium and chlorides become hydrated, surrounded by the water molecule, and that's how they dissolve. Okay, read through that. Know what an acid and a base is. Just know that definition. pH measures the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. pH of seven is neutral, below seven is acidic, below above seven is basic. If you have, you can have, if your body has its hydrogen concentration disturbed, you can get into a lot of trouble, for instance, with diabetes. But you don't wanna have uh, perturbations or changes in your hydrogen ion. So know, know what the pH means. There's the pH scale. The body is about 7.35 to 7.45. Pure water is neutral. Stomach acid is extremely acidic. Oven cleaner is extremely basic. So the whole purpose of homeostasis, the whole purpose of body processes is to keep the pH of your body uh, around 7.4. And that occurs from kidney activity and lung activity. Buffers are substances like bicarbonate uh, that uh, keep the pH, help keep the pH between that 7.35 and 7.45. Okay, slow down a bit. Okay. You know what a salt is? Salts are called electrical electrolytes because they carry currents. If you've ever, ever had an EKG, the EK leads read the electrical current flowing through your body based upon 
the activity of the heart. Okay, organic compounds. We're going to talk about carbohydrates, uh, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. So know what monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides are. Carbohydrates are the predominant energy source. Okay. Just recognize this structure for glucose. It's a hexagon. It has six sides, six carbons, so six bonds. Know what a dehydration synthesis is? Two molecules join removal of water. Know what hydrolysis is? Uh, you break. You can break down sucrose by adding water back into the reaction. So I mentioned in your oral cavity, amylase is an enzyme which will uh, digest sucrose into glucose and fructose, and that's through hydrolysis. So dehydration synthesis removes water and puts two monosaccharides to form a disaccharide. A hydrolysis breaks down a disaccharide such as sucrose and adds water back in to form uh, glucose and fructose. Uh, glycogen is called animal starch. If a living system takes glucose molecules and puts together uh, glucose molecules. You can form this branched tree-like structure for glycogen. Glycogen is how glucose is stored in the liver. Okay, so just read through this. It's a little summary. Make sure you are familiar with all of those structures, examples, and so on. Lipids are water insoluble. We have four classes, fatty acids, fats, steroids, and phospholipids. Okay, we have two minutes left. Okay, so let's move on. So go ahead and read through this table. Make sure you know what a fatty acid, and we'll talk about fats, cholesterol, and phospholipids. Know the functions and remarks. Okay, a fatty acid has uh, oxygen on one end, and the rest is a hydrocarbon. So, so those are fatty acids. If a fatty acid is unsaturated, it has double bonds. So your job is not to memorize these structures. Your job is to recognize them. I will never ask you to draw these out. You'll only have to identify an image or answer questions about these guys. Okay, let's take a break here. Let's stop the recording for now. Okay, I never can remember how to get to, I don't want to stop the presentation, I want to stop, uh, you are presenting, uh, here it is, stop recording. Okay, we'll take a little break.